It's me, Brosy Queen, and welcome back to my wrestling channel. Why am I dressed like this, you may be wondering? Well, you can blame Twitter, because Bussy King is getting way more attention over there than Bussy Queen. And hey, I'll take what I can get. I'm not complaining, I'm just giving y'all what you want. Anyway, today we'll be traveling back in time to uncover the lost runways of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13. And then a fun little twist, we'll be putting each unaired runway into a tournament-style bracket, and then picking our favorites one by one in order to determine the ultimate winner of Bussy Queen's official, unofficial, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 unaired runways hot rot fight to the death survival tournament. May the best Instagram photo win. <laughs> So here's our bracket, 32 looks, randomly seated. Ow, ow. First up, we've got Olivia Lux's Finale Eleganza versus La La Ree's Fascinator look. Olivia's look, as always, very pretty. I will say I think this look is maybe a little more mature than what she typically wears in drag, but it's gorgeous on her. It kind of is giving me like Donna Summer silhouette vibes from back in the disco days. La La Ree's look, her Fascinator, girl, are you gagging because Rose wore the exact same thing on the runway? Does a rose smell as sweet by any other name? Yes, I think it does. La La Ree looks beautiful here as well. And the crazier thing is that the producers know what the queens brought in their closets, and the fact that they didn't stop one of them from bringing a rose fascinator look, well, that smells like riggery to me. Anyways, let's make a choice. Mm, gonna go with La La Ree. Ooh, okay, this is a double Kimura feature. I wanna say it is an absolute crime that these two looks have to go up against each other because both are so freaking beautiful, but just how the cookie crumbles. The first look would have been her pockets runway and it's giving me decorative furniture. Like she almost looks like one of those really pretty vases that you would put on top of a pillar in like a really rich person's home or something. And her drag excellence look on the right is stunning. It's actually a tribute to her late drag mother, may her soul rest in peace. And the dress itself is a recreation of Taj Mahal's dress that she wore when she won Miss Continental Plus 2007. Okay, this is almost an impossible decision because I love the story of the drag excellence look, but I think I like the visual surrealism of her pockets look a little bit better. I'm gonna have to pick the pockets look. I love it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Joey J's drag excellence look on the left versus Kimura's fascinator on the right. Joey, as we all know, was, you know, kind of did her own thing on the runway. She marched to the beat of her own gay drum, if you will. <laughs> This is giving me Maleficent meets Evanescence, but the gown itself is gorgeous. My only question for Joey though, are the feathers chicken? But I mean, how do you compare to Kamara Hall wearing a Bob Mackie inspired dress like this? The baby blue is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm not totally sure that this says fascinator in the way that many of the other fascinator looks did. Like it's not hit you over the head with a headpiece. It's just like, oh, a nice soft little subtle headpiece off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Kimura's because I think it's closer to her personal brand of style. It's a prettier look overall and it's fascinating. Okay, the next set is Elliot's finale drag excellence look versus Joey J's pocket look. Elliot is another queen that had a really interesting fashion journey, I guess you could say on the runway during the season, ending with, you know, the, the flamingo disaster. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that though. I do like what she's wearing in this drag excellence look, but I will say it's not hitting as hard as I want it to for drag excellence. Joey's look over here is giving me like Pinocchio ho, she better don't. Girl Miss Heidi in closet found shaking in her closet. <laughs> she says this look is inspired by a combination of Boogie Woogie Beagle Boy and Sucker Punch. I think the character that she's referring to from that movie is Amber, the pilot. I think I would have chosen Joey's pockets look if there wasn't just like random pieces of fringe dangling from like every single piece of free fabric. So I'm gonna go with Elliot's drag excellence look. Next up, we have Joey J's fascinator look versus Utica Queen's unused LeMay runway. Remember the premiere was split, so she did the sheer one while the other episode did LeMay, but actually both sets of queens had to prepare both looks. For Joey, this really surprised me. This is not something I would think she would ever think to dress herself in, but it's so fun, it's campy, it's 
it's draggy. I mean, it's very obvious what it is. She's got tea spilling on the top of her head as her actual fascinator. And the rest of the gown is literally just like a giant puddle of tea. And then Utica's LeMay look. It's really intriguing and it confused me at first. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then I read her little inspiration and she said actually it was inspired by old like biblical paintings of how they used to depict halos around angels and saints. And once I started looking at that inspiration, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Her whole gown is like sort of this aged, almost tablecloth looking lame material with like a flower print on it. And then like to create sparkle and shine, she has these little pearlescent details up and down her stockings. And this one is so tough for me because I think these are both really unique looks from these queens, but... I think I'm gonna choose Joey J's tea look. It's really fun and plus y'all know I love tea. And before we go any further, a quick message from today's video sponsor. Who can help you earn some extra cash? Opinion Outpost. I don't know if you know this, but you can get paid for sharing your opinion. You can make money while you're watching Netflix, browsing YouTube, or when you just can't get to sleep at night. It's easy, and you can do it anywhere. I've tried Opinion Outpost, and I love how easy they've made it to sign up and start earning extra cash that I can redeem directly to my PayPal account or as Amazon gift cards, which is great for all you online shopaholics out there like myself. Personally, I'm I'm saving my extra cash to buy that new Nickelodeon all-star brawl fighting game they just announced. Maybe you've been saving up to start your very own YouTube channel, or you just need a new outfit now that we can finally go outside. Click the link in the description of this video to start earning money now. And thanks so much to Opinion Outpost for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. This'll be easy. <laughs> okay, so we have Denali's unused lame runway versus Elliot's pockets look. Crikey, <laughs> she's giving me like back swamp true blood vibes, like Sookie's coming for you. I, hmm, hmm, I don't really like that. And like, I think it's cute with the photo in the green screen background and stuff, but on the runway, I think this would have been very strange. Denali's on the other hand, oh my God, she looks like golden melting ice cream. Like she has no right to be looking this damn good. She's like the golden heat miser. It's almost like a quilt or sleeping bag type of material. And I love the silhouette that she's created with it coming off of the shoulders, but still with the exposed legs. It's very unique. Denali is a queen that came to slay on the runway, and I truly don't think that she got enough credit throughout the season for the amazing looks that she turned. So Denali, Shantae, you stay. Again, with the looks that Denali brought to the runway. Oh my God. We have her pocket looks here, which is like the little Polly Pocket doll, all grown up and ready to beat you up on the playground and steal your lunch money. She looks sickening. On the right though. <laughs> Oh, Dana Burner. What am I looking at here? This is um, Snow Miser. I do want to say, thank God she at least had one runway that was not red, orange, and yellow. And I know that probably took a lot from her to make the choice to go all blue, but I mean, bravo to her for doing that. And you know, it's not like the worst look in the world. She's just inspired by Hades, and it very much is giving me that, mixed with Ursula. But like so many of Tina's looks, I just feel like it's lacking a little bit of like, modernity or something. And there probably is a really good place for this type of costume. Like on a theatrical stage, this would be amazing. But I think ultimately the biggest problem with a lot of Tina's looks were that the other looks were just so much better. Denali's pocket look wins this one. Wow, another Kamara Hall double feature. On the left, we have her yellow look, which is inspired by Bob Mackie doing outfits for the Supremes. And what she's done here is so freaking gorgeous. That dress is fitting her like a glove. It's clearly inspired inspired by Bob Mackie. It's giving that vibe, that olden golden era of, you know, live performance and classic glamour that Kimura does so well. And fun fact, when she posted this yellow gorgeous runway on her Instagram, she also posted another yellow look showing off her nude body. It was intended to honor Asian and Asian American heritage. And on Instagram, she wrote, my intention is to show the beauty and diversity of our community. Not all Asians look alike, nor are all our experiences the same. As racism and hate crimes continue to rise in our country, Country, we need to support and uplift one another more than ever. And against her yellow gorgeous look is her lame look, which I think is even more beautiful upon like closer inspection because from far away, you're just like, oh, sad tears of a fashion clown. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful, but it's not stunning until you get those 
finer details of the beading and the ruffles and the material that she used to create these pants and top. Like it is so high fashion and gorgeous and girl like bald is beautiful, especially when it's encrusted in rhinestones. I love the fake wig bald thing. Both looks are stunning. And like, how do you pick between Kimura and Kimura? I'm gonna go with the yellow gorgeous look. Okay, this is just gonna get tougher and tougher as we go deeper into these brackets. So we're in the second tier of that first side and we have Lala Ri's fascinator look versus Kimura's pockets. Ugh, both of these looks are amazing. But Kimura is just next level otherworldly beauty. I have to go with Kimura's pockets look here. Well, girl, the quickest decision I've ever been able to make. Kimura's Fascinator versus Elliot's Drag Excellence. I'm gonna pick Kimura every time. This turned out to be so much fun because I'm getting able to like see and compare looks that I never like would see or compare had we just compared them all category by category. Joey's Tea Spilling look versus 24 Karat Denali Gold LeMay. Denali. We've got Kimura's yellow look versus Denali's pockets look. I have to go with Denali's here, I think because it's closer to what I would wear, like my actual personal style, but I am by no means saying that the other look is like not as good or a bad look. Polly Pocket, come through. Wow. Our third tier, <laughs> Kimura versus Kimura. Again, we've seen this a lot. Here we have her pocket look versus the fascinator, pockets. Oh my God. <gasps> Denali versus Denali. <sighs> This LeMay look is so beautiful, but the Pockets one is just so like modern and fresh and like punky. <sighs> I've got to pick the raw fashion and beauty of Denali's gold LeMay look here. Wow. Who is going to win the left side of our bracket? Kimura or Denali? I hate this. I really want to like phone a friend. Can I ask the audience? What, what are you guys picking? These are probably two of the best unaired runway looks of the entire set. Hmm. I'm leaning towards Denali's here just because it's a little bit more avant-garde, a little more outside of her box, and I think really challenges her brand a little bit. Whereas like Kimura, we see this kind of, uh, you know, pretty fashion thing over and over as gorgeous as it is. Ooh, okay, Denali, I've got to pick Denali. Okay, now we're gonna fill in the right side of the bracket and find out who is going to go up against Denali's gold lame look. We've got Kimura's douchebag look from the bag ball, gag and a half. This is genius, next level, amazing, and that is up against. Tina Burner combusted into flames. Ah! <laughs> oh, Tina. This is giving me like circus ringleader girl on fire, Katniss Everdeen kind of vibes. My problem here with Tina's look is that it looks like a pile of on fire embered ashes rather than actually her being on fire. Sorry, Tina, but water beats fire. Okay, here we have Elliot's sheer look versus La La Ree's beast look. And Elliot's sheer look as it was supposed to be is actually not that sheer. It's kind of just like a nude, opaque almost garment with little crystals glued here and there to give her a little bit of a stronger silhouette. I think it's pretty, but maybe not totally finished. Like it looks like they were stoning it and then kind of got bored and didn't finish. And La La Ree's beast look, it's pretty. I think it's a really good look, especially for La La Ree. Some of her runways are kind of weak compared to the other girls in the competition. This one I think stands up great on its own. I love the silhouette that she's created with the big shoulders. And then the bottom half is like an actual sort of ball gown mermaid skirt tail thing. And I think the look is a much better executed one than Elliot's sheer look. So La La Ree, you La La win. Next up is Joey J's yellow yellow gorgeous look versus Tina Burner's outfit that she would have worn in the roast. And I just want to give Tina Burner a round of applause here. Come on, everybody, please. If you're sitting at home looking at this, this is amazing. She took her name, Tina Burner, and did a pun on the burner part and then literally dressed up as the burn book from Mean Girls for the roast, which is like, by the way, my favorite movie. I've seen it probably hundreds of times. This is so well done. Thank you, Tina, for this look. Thank you for putting that out into the universe. Joey's look is pretty, but it's not much more than that. Like she pretty much was just like, okay, typical performance look, but like make it yellow. Tina, you burned up the competition. She is a nasty skank whore and she wins this round. Oh mama. We had Elliot's beast look versus Utica Queen's drag excellence look. <gasps> this look from Utica. Wow. I love also that it kind of ties into her like biblical era painting halo angel thing that she did in the LeMay part of this video we saw earlier. I mean, there is just a level of literally drag excellence to this that is unmatched by so many other looks that we saw on the runway this season. And obviously Elliot's like strange beast thing is like not gonna stand up to this. Yuriko wins this round. Next up, 
we get an 80s gay fitness instructor at the club versus water ethereal goddess. So this is Joey J's LeMay look. I hate it. I really, really, really hate it. I, I think that she was maybe headed in the right direction from like the waist up, but I think it could have worked had she not thrown on the random pieces of fringe on the bottom half and also the blue hair with this. I'm like, girl, it's too much. It's too much. Lala Ree is giving me, she was born in nature, raised by the waterfalls, and now she is gracing us with her beauty. I love this look. Okay, I know the entire world basically spent the entirety of season 13 roasting Tina Burner for her runways and like sometimes deserved. I mean, girl, the beast look. Really? That said, this look is really well done from Tina. Apparently the little rainbow scarves were supposed to somehow, I guess, rip off the tux part and then reveal to what kind of looks like the whole circus tent on her body, which is really fun because she challenged herself to do a reveal on the pockets runway and really went outside of the box here. I mean, nobody else thought of something like this. This is a good look from Tina. And Denali's drag excellence look, Aurora Boris Alakazam. She died, she was abducted by aliens, lifted into the heavens, and then like combined with alien spirits and then sit back down here on earth to bless us with her beauty. Just look at this, girl, you only get stuff like this once in a lifetime, okay? Denali, you keep this round. Okay, now we have Kimura's Beast look versus Denali's Beast look. These I think were actually some of the best Beast runways and we were truly robbed by not seeing these on the runway because the other ones, uh, they were good, but like these are better. Denali is giving me like pregnant alien, maybe in the middle of having her baby or something. <laughs> She's got these like crazy salad finger kind of fingers and maybe the eye hat is a little nod to Raja's entrance look, maybe? I don't know. Kimura's beast look is giving me like Tweety Bird demon from hell with a sense of fashion. She says this look is inspired by the dragon and lion dance of the Chinese New Year Parade. I love how often she has incorporated different cultural elements into her drag. And I think she was maybe the only one to really do this beast runway in such a high concept way. But Denali's was high concept in another way like full camp full insanity and that's why i love denali's and i've got to go with denali's here and finally kimura's beat it versus kimura's roast look both looks are gorgeous as they always are her beat look is giving me like first lady but like she actually runs the country the husband can pretend play in the office but he's just a figurehead for this business bitch on the left look at her mm. and on the right this is what she was supposed to wear for the roast <laughs> Which may not have even been very good for Kimura. Like, imagine somebody looking this effing beautiful is trying to roast you. I wouldn't even be able to pay attention to what she's saying. Like, I would just be staring at her being like entranced by the literal beautiful goddess angel from heaven in front of me. I would forget to laugh. I don't think it would have been smart for her to look that gorgeous on, on stage for the roast, but I've got to pick it. It's an amazing look. Okay, this is an easy choice for me. The girl that douchebag look is next level. The beast look from Lala Ree, cute, but no competition. Ooh, fun camp and referencing my favorite movie versus like Game of Thrones beauty queen realness? Yes. Ooh, two ethereal goddesses. Ooh, head to head. The vibes of this are so eerily similar, but Denali's is a little more, a little more stunning, I have to say. I think the hair, the hair did it for me there. If La La Rie maybe had like a bigger hair or something, but then again, she's wet from the waterfall. Girl, how's she supposed to get that wig styled? <sighs> okay, Denali's. Wow, crazy high concept alien versus beat me up, mama, slap me. Slap me with that big old fan. Yo, I love the campiness of Denali's look so, so much. And I love the raw beauty and fashion of Kimura's drag. <laughs> I truly am a Denali stan at heart. I love this alien thing. <gasps> Ooh. It's so crazy that a latex douchebag look in the shower, like the photo is literally her in a shower versus this like cathedral <laughs> insanity thing that Utica is wearing. How are they, like they're so high fashion, high concept craziness. Y'all, the right side is hitting a little bit harder than the left side, okay? The decisions are harder here. The stakes are higher. I've got to pick Utica's. It's more, Stunning, I guess. Ooh, Denali versus Denali. <laughs> I love this stupid alien look. <gasps> wow. Utica versus Denali. Who would have thought? Okay, Utica wins that one for me for sure. Oh, no question. Utica. <laughs> wow. Okay. Utica wins. Oh. <laughs> Utica wins. Wow, I actually did not think that that look was gonna hit that hard for me when I was like setting all of this up, 
but it kind of did. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought. Like, was there any decision maybe where I went wrong? Was there something you would have picked when I wouldn't have picked it? Are you surprised? Are you gooped? Are you gagged? Let me know. And as a special treat, I do also want to go ahead and hot and rot some of the other unaired runways that I couldn't include in the main bracket due to time and space limitations. First up, we've got Joey's Beat It runway that she actually ended up wearing for the reveal promo video, which I think was a very smart choice because this got my eyes on her like very early. And this was a level of drag excellence. I think that Joey really didn't bring any other time. This is fabulous and definitely. We also have Kimora's money bags look, which I cut because girl, we already had like 15 Kimora looks in the bracket, but fabulous business bitch of the 80s. Girl, look at that. She's on her little cell phone. Look at her charts and graphs. Buy this stock while it's hot, hot, hot. And we also have Simone's Marie Antoinette inspired sheer look. I didn't put this in the bracket because Simone won the whole damn competition. It's like pretty little princess, but also like I'm a cold hard bitch. Let them eat cake. This look is hot. My hottest hot today was left in fate's hands and Utica Queen takes it. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen and for these unaired runways they have chosen. Utica's drag excellence look. But yeah, congrats to all the dolls and I'm glad we got to, um, you know, dive deep back into the unaired runways that really deserved so much more attention. So thank you guys for watching as always and drop a like if you liked the video. And oh, hit subscribe if you want to see more. And I want to give a special shout out to Aiden Smith, Anna Miriam, Anthony, Aquamarina, August, Everywhere, B-Rolls, Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Clea Moosedale, Dermisha Robinson, Delani, Deutsche Leather, Dr. Martin, Evan, Fractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Genex, Jonah, Johnny, Giovanni, Kevin, Kiki and John, Madam Muffy, Markowitz, Millennial Hissy Fit, Nathan, Opal, Pasqual Nava, Ron, Shannon, Shazzy, Sultan, Tammy, Thomas, Timotheus, Tony, Travis, Tyler, Usinikaus, Vendetta, and who are all supporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Aliao, Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Felicia, Cody P, JB, Joseph, JP in Dallas, Laura, Luke, Matthew, Nurse Luca, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, and Triton, who were all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.